something double digit thousand. <laughs>
five times um, if it's more than 50% 10 flashes below 50% and it will constantly blink when it's really really low uh, below 15% I believe um, if it runs out of power it will save the file before it powers off with a supercapacitor um, if you're going to run it off a power bank um, it says use a 1 amp uh, capable supply one um, you can loop record time lapse uh, time lapse is really good actually um, there are some videos on my channel that have probably already used this um, I'll link them in the description or I might insert one as well um, photos they're not great but I mean if you want a photo camera you can have your mobile phone anyway so um, what I found it's better extracting a single frame from the 60 frames a second for an image rather from video uh, shooting rather than taking a photo with it uh, oddly um, the photo resolution is uh, 2 megapixels uh, you can take up to 10 photos in a second in burst mode obviously you can connect to it via Wi-Fi which I'll demonstrate shortly okay 155 degree field of view 1080p 60 FPS 180 uh, 1080p 30 FPS and 720 60 um, outputs move MOV file format um, NTSC PAL uh, up to a 64 gig uh, card. I use a class 10 in it um, and it is absolutely fine. Uh, power consumption at 5 volts, uh, in here it says it's 650 milliamp hour, whereas on the box it says 600 milliamp hour. So if you want to be on the safe side, go with the 650 milliamp hour. Um, stated consumption and the net weight is 66 grams, so negligible especially for the quality of footage it puts out um, just in uh, different languages so that is the camera itself the manual and all the gubbins that you get with it right so I think I'm gonna just change the exposure on this camera so it can pick up the mobile phone better okay what I'm gonna do is power the camera on that's in uh, video shooting mode I'm gonna press the Wi-Fi button once I'm just gonna sit in a tripod over here uh, pointing towards a 3D printer okay there's the run camera, it's already pre-configured um, and it will automatically connect to the camera as you see this is the default screen it's in video mode you can change it to time lapse mode and all the settings, I'll go for all those For example, photo, you can take a photo of it, uh, time lapse. I've noticed a few quirks with like um, changing time lapse into different FOVs, it doesn't actually take note of the FOV for that time lapse um, in the video, or the if you set it to like time lapse video in 30 fps it actually messes it up um, in, with this firmware this is default firmware that came from the factory with uh, the most important thing on here is video so if you can s get an idea of how wide that field of view is I'll change it to medium and then to narrow and just click the tick if you wanted to save it as well 
uh, whereas I don't. Auto white balance, for example, we're under LED lighting, or um, so you change it to one of these incandescent, fluorescent, and then you've got uh, cloudy day, sunny, and auto. I'll leave it on auto, I'm lazy, and I expect most of the um, people would probably be inclined to leave it on that. Um, next is the exposure. So that's two, much brighter. Minus two, a lot darker. I'll just cancel that out. We've gone through the FOV. This next one is quite an interesting one. And it is the metering mode. I don't know if you can see that. Metering, I think it takes the whole screen for the auto white balance and by dynamic range adjustment. Center weighted, so it will be more inclined to see what's in the middle. Or it will be spot metered, dead center, according to the icon. Once again, I'll leave it on full. And then, if like me, you like to do time lapse with a, a rig and stuff, this is flip. And then, automatic with the inbuilt gyro, uh, which is cool. Uh, might make for some crazy FPV footage, but nonetheless. Okay, that's for top row. Down here we have, you can change it 1080p, 720. In the middle you can change it 60 to 30 FPS, and then you can change the bit rate. So if I change it to 720p, you can see the bit rate changes from 30 to 20 meg. It gives options down to 11. Uh, 1080p, gone back to 30, 17, I'll change it to 30, FPS 20, 12 and 8. Once again, just leave it at the highest quality if you've got a big enough card. These three dots with a line through uh, trip me up. If you click on that, it's slow motion mode. So it will record, um, it will take 60 FPS, but it will put it in the file as a 30 FPS um, with no sound. So just be aware of that and make sure you don't leave it on by accident because that messed me up as well. Um, big red button uh, makes the camera blow up obviously. No it doesn't. It starts the recording so I'll start recording now. Um, that's that. Okay and this is a sound check off that. I'll see if I can swap between the cameras. Um, 3D printed parts and stuff and camera mount. What okay, we'll stop that. There we go. Bottom left is a preview, so you get a live playback. Uh, unlike the old GoPro copies, it doesn't actually have to download it straight to your phone, it does it, reads it directly, but you do get buffering. Um, you can make it full screen, like so. This is like Inception, isn't it? And videos recorded on videos, recorded on videos. Anyway, back out of that. Um, much like the full screen of the playback, this button on the right, you can get a full screen live um, framing shot if you need. The only other things in here are the settings. Auto sync time, yep, yeah, that's a given. Wide dynamic range, date stamp, auto shutdown, feedback beat, USB function, volume. I've got it knocked down to four at the moment because I went FPV flying and you'll see the footage on the end of this video, as well as some um, comparison footage to a Xiaomi Yi, uh, Ekon H9, Mobius and the Runcam 3 obviously but the volume 
the microphone's not great on it. Um, that's the one shortcoming that I've noticed, but the price and the video quality far outweighs that minor little thing, sadly. Um, it might be better with a little bit of something covering it, it might, might just be wind noise. Uh, moving on, auto record, loop recording, and then your TV out for uh, live FPV. Um, for example, if you wanted an icon up on the screen to show you that it was um, recording and so forth, PAL and your frequency. Wi-Fi settings, like any other action camera, you would have um, your Wi-Fi SSID, password, uh, auto, and then you get some um, nice micro SD functionality, it's just showing you what you've got there, format, restore, and then your firmware version. With that, um, there's not much else I can really show you on this, but while we are here, I will grab this. Uh, this is a micro USB charging cable. So, with that, I'm going to start recording. So, so as you see, this, this is recording on here. I'm going to plug this in if I can get to it. <coughs> um, I'm going to knock it over to the sound and the full screen on the what I'm recording here. Um, as I plug this in, I don't know if this is picking up noise from the, I don't know if it's a linear or a switching regulator in the charger that I've got. Um, as you see, now it's recording, the red light shows that it's receiving power from the micro USB. And if I unplug it, that goes up. And we'll see if this now comes back to a non-scratchy audio because of everyone and I on its own power. Um. With that, that concludes the look at the app and the run cam for itself. So, as I've mentioned, I will run some footage of uh, comparison and it was all taken on like a bit of a cloudy day within seconds of each other. And recently I have put this on one of my little quads, it's a 3S 5 inch quad. Um, I didn't do anything special on it, just to get some nice footage to share with you. So, with that, the footage is going to roll after this. And I hope this has given you an insight into the Run Cam 3. And personal viewers, I love it to bits. It's a shame that they've had to discontinue it. Obviously, it's been discontinued because it's such a big threat. 
Pro's size, brilliant. Battery powers, yeah, good enough for what what you need if you needed video camera. Buy a video camera. Um, yeah, you can't really record with it plugged in if you're doing voice, but you can if you're time lapsing, which is ideal. It does get a bit hot. Yeah, is it going to blow up? No, don't think so. The microphone there and on the back probably needs a little bit of covering if you're going to fly exclusively FPV or um, if you're worried about the sound getting wind noise. <sighs> what else to say? Get the spares while you can. I've got spare glass. I've got a GoPro session style um, action camera mount that I use on a tripod. Um, and obviously TPU mounts, although I can print them myself, I bought a couple. Run cam, knocked out of the park on this one. Look out for the Foxier box review coming up on my channel soon. I've managed to acquire one uh, before GoPro shut them down, I suppose. That's an interesting camera. It's probably more in line with what a GoPro session is, whereas it will do 4K. Um, it has some interesting modes, maybe 720p, 240 frames a second could be interesting on a for quadcopters. But that will be coming up in time, um, so keep an eye out for that if you've got an interest. And I'll probably do a direct comparison on the same quad with them, um, for good measure. So, with that, thank you very much for watching. If there's any questions you have about it, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, at the time of me shooting this video, they are still in stock and you are able to get them, unless you live in America. Sorry. <sighs> Love it.